Welcome to The Mushroom Show. My name is Tony Shields. This is episode 23, and this is the one place where you need to be if you want to stay on top of all the cool things happening in the world of mushrooms. In this episode of The Mushroom Show, we're going to be visiting one of the OGs of exotic mushroom farming in the United States. We got to visit Far West Fungi and their California operation. I met Kyle Garoni, who took us on a tour of both the farm and the stores. It was super cool to check out. We're also going to be digging into the science of functional mushrooms and longevity. With scientists trying to answer the age-old question of old age, postulating whether or not functional mushrooms might be able to help us live longer. So if you like mushrooms, if you like The Mushroom Show, please go ahead and hit that like button. It really helps the channel grow. And if you want to see future episodes of The Mushroom Show, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. Let's jump into the show. Now, 40 years ago, there were probably not that many people in the US that were really aware of these so-called exotic mushrooms. A lot of the mushrooms that you could find were button mushrooms. Most of the time they were just found in a can. And the general perception of these mushrooms was that they were void of any kind of nutritional value. And they were just kind of like this sad vegetable. But that didn't stop the Garoni family from starting Far West Fungi, a now iconic mushroom grower based in California, which in a sense kind of helped to pioneer the cultivation of these exotic mushrooms in the US. I got a chance to visit one of their farms in Moss Landing, California, and also one of their stores in San to cruise and as someone who loves growing mushrooms and who loves eating mushrooms it was really awesome to check it out i think you'll love it as well let's roll the clip california the land of sunshine oranges and mushrooms Sure, chances are that mushrooms aren't the first thing that comes to mind when you think of the Golden State, but for over 40 years now, it has been the home base of Far West Fungi, one of the OG exotic mushroom growers in the US. Admittedly, I've known about Far West for quite a while. In fact, I even made a trip all the way to San Francisco in 2018 just to visit one of their stores. But this time, I wanted to get a more fulsome understanding of Far West, to better understand not only how they grow mushrooms, but also how they're growing the mushroom market itself. My name is Kyle Garoni. I'm the production manager uh, of Far West Fungi. We're a exotic mushroom farm. We've been around 42 years, and right now we're at our production site in Moss Landing, California. First mushroom farm, we're in uh, Moss Landing, California, right on the coast, and this is where we grow our shiitake, our lion's mane, most of our mushrooms, and we'll go on a tour. You'd think that a mushroom farm in California would have to deal with the heat. Mushrooms like cool, humid conditions and California would be too hot, right? Well, not here. In fact, Far West doesn't even have air conditioners in their grow rooms. They use the naturally temperate climate of the Bay Area and basically let the mushrooms do their thing. At this site, it's probably one of the more efficient mushroom farms because of the temperature it stays very stable. So we actually aren't heating and cooling very much. None of our rooms actually have any air conditioning. Seriously? None. That doesn't sound like a mushroom farm. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and what's the production capacity again? You said 30,000 pounds a week? So we do, yeah, we have two sites. So this site's probably about 25,000 pounds. Okay. And then the other farm we do about 10,000 pounds. It's an 85,000 square foot facility on 10 acres. And although it's big, it still feels like every single step of the process is a result of trying lots of small things and figuring out what works best over many, many years. You can tell this farm has experience. Totally family business. All my brothers in the business. My parents started the business. Um, I grew up around mushrooms my whole life. So this whole mushroom boom is quite surprising to us. The actual farm operation would be pretty familiar looking to anyone who has grown mushrooms before, but just on a big scale. They take hardwood, sterilize, add spawn, colonize it, fruit the bags, harvest the mushrooms, and package them up for sale. Sounds easy, but mushroom farming is never as easy as it sounds. I've talked to a lot of people that they kind of come in this where it's like, oh, well, I'm retiring and I want to do something. It seems like a good way to make money. I'm like, don't, don't do that. Like, it's not for the faint heart. It's not like, I'm going to take a retirement job. I'm going to grow some mushroom. It's not. I mean, you're dealing with something that you have to control, like everything the whole time. And if you mess up somewhere along the line, pretty much anywhere close to the start, you're just going to have complete failure. Mushroom farming is a lot of labor, period. 
Far West Fungi is fully vertically integrated, meaning they do everything themselves, including managing the cultures, making the blocks, growing the mushrooms of course, and everything in between. This is a ton of work and definitely not for everybody, but Kyle feels like this level of control and involvement is a super important aspect of what makes them special. Now, was it a conscious decision for Far West Fungi to like be vertically integrated and in, in, to the point where you make your own blocks, make your own substrate, or is that something that just evolved naturally? I think it evolved naturally because we've been around for 40 something years and there was just no other choice. Like really the spawn, you know, spawn companies before only were caring about agaricus and they didn't have any good exotic strains. Mm. So because of it, we had to like, you know, make our own spawn, keep our own genetics. Now at, we see as this industry has grown, people are specializing we didn't have the luxury to specialize because <laughs> there was no one else to go to. Right. So we were pretty much our own island. So now because of that, we're just very, every we're kind of everywhere um, because we had to, you know, sell direct the consumer because we wanted to grow very interesting mushroom species and we wouldn't, didn't just want to grow shiitake. And so that really helped us. At this farm, they grow mostly shiitake. Apparently California has quite the appetite for this famous and delicious mushroom. But over the years, they have become well known for growing exotic mushrooms, which basically means anything other than buttons. When I was there, they were growing functional mushrooms like lion's mane and even reishi. They were growing classics like blue oyster and yellow oyster, but also some more rare mushrooms like auricularia auricula, otherwise known as the wood ear. Geez, I wonder why they call it wood ear. Yeah. Does that look like a little ear right there? Usually when you eat this mushroom, because most people have, it's in hot and sour soup, and they're like little strips. Yeah. Yeah, and then you just wouldn't, you wouldn't see it like this. My favorite way to eat this is like done like a seaweed salad. Okay. Super good. Raw like seaweed salad salad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good. But as I mentioned at the start, Far West isn't just growing mushrooms. They are also growing the mushroom industry itself, bringing knowledge and awareness of how cool mushrooms are through their stores. We got fresh, we got dried uh, tinctures. We have a whole menu of all different mushroom dishes that we do here. Uh, we cultivate the majority of these mushrooms and then we also have wild forage products, uh, reishi mushrooms that we cultivate as well, lion's mane, chanterelles, cordyceps, tree oyster, lobster mushrooms, maitake, and uh, if, we, if we don't have the mushroom, then no one gets it. We have our, our whole uh, tincture line that we do, say, Lion's mane, reishi, and turkey tail are the most popular. But okay. definitely lion's mane is probably the most popular. <laughs> and the kits too. Yes, we have mushroom growing kits. So if you want to grow mushrooms at home, we got uh, all different varieties. We do shiitake, oyster, lion's mane, um, black oyster, all different mushrooms that we grow at the farm. We also have plug spawns. So if you want to inoculate logs, we have that. Uh, kids kit, this is to grow mushrooms on newspaper for a little fun experiment. Yeah, a full kitchen here basically, right? Because you're making lunch and all sorts of mushroom dishes. So, yeah, so we have our uh, a commercial kitchen uh, at, our, at another facility and we make everything there and then we bring it here and then they just heat it up. Uh, yeah. One of the goals of the store is to show people what you can do with mushrooms. We ate a giant meal with all sorts of dishes. Everything from fried lion's mane chicken sandwich to candy cap ice cream. If Far West is trying to increase the appetite for mushrooms with these dishes, they are doing a really good job. It was probably one of the best mushroom meals I have ever had, surprising even me with what mushrooms are capable of. Do you get a lot of people asking a lot of questions when they come in here? Confused, like yeah. what's going on, yeah? <laughs> really confused. Yeah. Because it's like, as a concept, this store is hard to explain right. without like getting really into it. What are some of the most common questions you get when people come in? Definitely people asking for psilocybin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's hard to know where to start because some people like hear medicinal and they're like a little apprehensive. Like, well, we have like edible mushrooms too if you're more into cooking and stuff. It's just really fun to learn about mushrooms. And... Yeah. As mushrooms continue to get more and more popular, I am confident we'll see more public facing mushroom stuff, like the Far West store. Mushrooms are taking over, and it's in no small part because of people like Kyle and his family who have been a driving force in spreading the spores. You know, we have grown up around mushrooms, but we appreciate all mushrooms and foraging. One thing we've realized is like, 
a lot of times mushroom farmers were just muck farmers and then like everything else was just like interesting mushroom people doing you know foraging and doing fun dinners but we also were part of that too so i think what we wanted to do with our sh our stores was kind of showcase like what you can do with mushrooms to inspire people you know now it tastes delicious and you should eat them i hope you enjoyed that it was totally awesome to see and kyle did send me home with some of their products they're this lion's mane jerky, which is absolutely delicious. It's just an, another way to help people realize what you can do with mushrooms is these delicious kind of jerkies. This one is a shiitake. No, sorry, this one is a tree oyster one. They also have a shiitake one quite like this and a lion's mane. And really, again, what they do best is not only grow mushrooms, but exhibit how you can use these different mushrooms and how you can enjoy them in so many different ways. Mushrooms are super versatile and it's great that more people are learning about it through their stores. But the other thing he sent me home with was this bag of dried candy cap mushrooms. Now you saw in the video, we were enjoying some candy cap ice cream, which is just absolutely insane. I can't get across how much these mushrooms smell like exactly like a really strong maple syrup. It's, you know, that's why they call them candy cap is because they have this smell and they can be used in desserts which is kind of unusual for mushrooms. And they're not cultivated. Candy cap mushrooms are only wild harvested. And that smell, that strong maple smell, really only comes across when they're dried. So a super cool thing and just another example of how amazing and versatile mushrooms can be. So if you ever get the chance to try candy cap, I can't recommend it enough. On to our next story. Now, the science of aging and longevity is definitely a hot topic. And the desire for humans to live longer has probably been around for as long as humans have. And for sure, today people are living longer because, well, we understand the signs of aging a lot better, but also there's more and more technology that is helping us get there. But is it possible that functional mushrooms could help us live longer? Well, perhaps surprisingly, the science says maybe. Believe it or not, there is a large amount of research that has looked into this, whether or not mushrooms can actually help us live longer. And although the evidence isn't totally conclusive for a number of reasons, it definitely deserves some further investigation. I recently found a paper that was published in Aging Research Reviews, and the goal of the paper was to basically comb through all of the research that has been done on functional mushrooms and the science of aging, and try to answer the question and find the most convincing evidence. One of the most obvious mushrooms to look into is reishi, which many of you may know has the nickname the mushroom of immortality, because historically it was thought to be useful for aging and longevity. Now, immortality might be a bit of a stretch, but as you'll see in a moment, there is some really interesting science to back it up, and likely a good reason why it has been given this nickname. But it's not just the mushroom of immortality that might have some longevity benefits, Mushrooms of all types have all sorts of compounds, specifically polysaccharides and triterpenes, that could surely be beneficial for healthy aging. And to add to that, many mushrooms also have antioxidant properties, which we all know is important for combating the natural aging of our cells and often thought of as being anti-aging. So here is the study, fungi as a source of bioactive molecules for the development of longevity medicines. And again, in general, what they did was they combed through a bunch of other research and tried to find some of the best evidence for functional mushrooms helping with longevity. And they specifically tried to weed out studies that just had adjacent properties that might be related to aging. So for example, if there was a study that found chaga had high levels of antioxidants and we know that antioxidants can be related to anti-aging it was adjacent and not like a direct study on longevity so they weeded that out and they really just wanted to look at specific studies that have specifically looked for functional mushrooms to help with longevity. Now they found studies from a bunch of different mushrooms, some of the more popular functional mushrooms, again specifically reishi, but also mushrooms like chaga, cordyceps sinensis, and cordyceps militaris, the wood ear, which I thought was pretty interesting, but also mushrooms that aren't necessarily typically associated with longevity, such as lion's mane and agaricus blazii. Now keep in mind, almost all this research hasn't been done on humans, instead it's been done on things like fruit flies, on nematodes and mice, 
These are organisms that have much shorter lifespans and can more easily be modeled for a model of lifespan or a model of longevity and how certain things affect that lifespan. Now, most of the research has been done on reishi, which again makes sense because it has the name, the mushroom of immortality. It's kind of well known for this. And most of the studies, in fact, have been done on reishi. And I'm not gonna go too deep into the individual studies because it really does get into the weeds. But just as an example, there was one study in 2019 which looked at a concentrated hot water extract of reishi fruiting bodies, and they wanted to see how that would affect the lifespan of nematodes. They found that the extract of reishi fruiting body definitely did have a beneficial effect on the lifespan of these nematodes, which extended the median lifespan of the worms from 17.3 days to 23.5 days, and extended the maximum longevity, so the longest any one worm survived, from 34 days to 38 days. Now, that might not seem like a ton. These organisms have super short lifespans anyways, but when you think about it, just by adding reishi extract, they were able to extend the lifespan of this organism by 35%, that is pretty fascinating. Now, this paper did summarize a bunch of these different studies into this nice little table. So you can see the species of mushroom, you can see the type of extract or compound, and you can see the effect that that compound or extract had on various organisms and their lifespan. And again, you can see there's lots of studies done on reishi. Some of them are pretty stunning, like this one, for example, a hot water extract from the mycelium of reishi extended the median lifespan of this same nematode by 45% and extended the maximum lifespan by 53%, which is pretty crazy. But what was also wild to me was how many different mushrooms had similar results. So shiitake, for example, studied on fruit flies, was able to extend the lifespan by over 40.5% for male fruit flies. And for whatever reason, the female fruit flies didn't do so well, only extending the lifespan by just over 6%, but still pretty interesting. And two other popular functional mushrooms, Cordyceps militaris and Maitake, or Griffola frondosa, extracts from those mushrooms had similar results on nematodes, extending the lifespan by 16.6%, and 17.6% respectively. Also, lion's mane extracts, which are definitely more known for their neuroprotective properties, more so than their anti-aging properties, had studies that show an increase in the lifespan of both fruit flies and mice, which is interesting because I imagine a mouse model is a lot closer to humans than a fruit fly model of longevity. Either way, in the mice, lion's mane was shown to increase the mean lifespan by 20% across both male and female mice. And in terms of maximum lifespan, the lion's mane extract was shown to increase 23% in male mice and 14.3% in female mice. Again, this is interesting because we don't typically think of lion's mane as something that would be useful for longevity or something that would be useful for anti-aging. It's more thought of as neuroprotection and kind of like the brain mushroom. But when you think of it in the context of how important neuroprotection is for healthy aging, well, it starts to make a little more sense and you can see why lion's mane might be included in these studies. The other notable thing is that in a lot of these studies, the functional mushrooms seem to exhibit the hormesis effect, which basically means that at low doses, it could have some beneficial effect on longevity or lifespan, but at higher doses, it might have no effect or sometimes might have the opposite effect of decreasing lifespan. From the paper, it says, certain studies in this review possessed doses of fungal extracts that either increased lifespan, did nothing, or worse, decreased lifespan. This is consistent with a hormesis response where low doses of a fungal extract or another stress can result in health benefits by activating the activity of stress resistance genes, producing a net benefit to the organism, while higher doses may overwhelm the organism's stress resistance mechanisms and become toxic. Therefore, dosing is of paramount importance. Another compound that this paper talks about that has some importance in terms of longevity is called ergothionine. And you may have never even heard of it before, but scientists think that this compound is so important for human health that there is some debate 
as to whether or not it should be considered a new vitamin, with some people even calling it the longevity vitamin. For example, there was one study that measured more than 100 compounds in the blood of thousands of different people, and the one compound that was most associated with a lower morbidity and a lower mortality was indeed ergothionine. It is thought that ergothionine isn't super critical for short-term health, which is why it's not today considered a vitamin, but it's super important for long-term health. It kind of acts as like a cytoprotectant or a protector of cells, which is again, one of the reasons why people think that it's important for longevity. But ergothionine is not something that's endogenous. We don't make it inside of our bodies. We need to get it from our diet. But importantly, ergothionine is not found in plants. It is not found in animals. It is found instead in mushrooms. And one of the mushrooms that is most associated with high levels of ergothionine are oyster mushrooms, which is one of the reasons why oysters are considered in this paper and have been studied for their potential beneficial effects on longevity. There are other mushrooms that are also high in ergothionine. Shiitake is one that really has high concentrations. But another one is porcini, although because of the fact that both oysters and shiitake are easy to cultivate, they're much easier to get, they probably have a better impact on longevity overall than something like porcini, which might have a higher ergothionine concentration, but is a lot harder to get because it needs to be wild harvested and is seasonal. So you might be wondering, what is the best overall mushroom for longevity? What, according to science, is the mushroom that we should be eating if we want to live forever? Well, the problem is no one really knows because it's really hard to draw final conclusions based on these studies. But they did have this interesting chart that showed all the mushrooms in the paper and the level of evidence backing up this idea of longevity. And as we can see here, if they had this black square, that means there were several studies that supported the effect. So for lifespan extension, the mushrooms with several studies showing greater than 20% lifespan extension were woodier, reishi, and shiitake, which means they're likely candidates for further research, perhaps research on humans, and are the most likely candidates for supporting longevity. Cordyceps and Agaricus blazii, and also chaga, had some supportive studies, but not enough to qualify as several according to this paper. But also interestingly, lion's mane, which maybe didn't have enough studies to support a strong argument for longevity, but it did have several studies which support it being a neuroprotectant which is highly correlated to healthy aging. But again, this research, although it's super cool and super interesting, it's not perfect, right? And there's several reasons why it's kind of hard to draw conclusions from this. First of all, mushrooms or any natural product are inherently hard to study because not only is human physiology complicated, but the ways that these mushrooms might interact with human physiology is also really complicated. Further, not only are there different types of mushrooms, but there are different parts of the mushrooms that can be used, like the mycelium or the fruiting body, and different ways that they can be extracted. Whether not extracted at all, extracted in the traditional way with something like a hot water extraction or a tea, or even dual extracted, or maybe multiple extractions that try and isolate very specific compounds. There are just so many variables to consider. And finally, most of the research that has been done specifically on longevity has not been done on humans who have a relatively long lifespan but has instead been done on fruit flies and worms and mice who have relatively short lifespans that are maybe more easily controlled for and manipulated to get these favorable results. But you can't necessarily extrapolate research that has been done on fruit flies to humans. We are just different in so many ways. So at the end of the day, there is no mushroom, unfortunately, that can help us live forever. But there is some really cool research and some evidence suggesting that, hey, maybe this is something that's worth looking into. And I hope we see a lot more research in the future. And that's it for this episode of The Mushroom Show. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. Again, if you like mushrooms, if you like The Mushroom Show, please go ahead and hit that like button. It really helps the channel grow. And if you want to see future episodes of the show, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. We appreciate it so much. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.